My name is Paul Dytel, and in this video I'll show you how to download and install JDK9 on your Mac, as well as how to manage multiple versions of the JDK that you might have installed. As you work your way through this video, if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at my email address that you see here on the screen, and you can also contact me as well through our Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter social media pages. This video is meant primarily for users of our books, Java 9 for Programmers and Java 9 How to Program 11th Edition, which you can learn more about at the URLs below the book covers here. It's also meant for use with our videos and courses based on Java 9, but anybody who is installing Java 9 on their Mac side by side potentially with other versions of the JDK will find this video useful. The basic install process for JDK9 on Mac OS is actually quite straightforward. You're going to go get the developer preview, which is the current version that's available at the time of this recording from jdk.java.net forward slash nine. You're going to download from that web page the DMG installer file, and we'll take a look at that web page in just a moment. Next, you're going to double click to open that DMG file, the disk image file. And finally, within the window that opens after it verifies the file, you're going to double click jdk9.pkg and then simply follow the on screen instructions. Now, as you'll see in subsequent slides, there's more to it in terms of selecting the default JDK to use on your system. And this is particularly important for people who are installing multiple versions of Java. Again, at the time of this recording, Java 9 is a developer preview. It's not final yet. So you may want to use, for example, Java 8 for your production code, but be able to test with Java 9 as well. So let's take a moment and go look at the web page here. I already have it open in my web browser. And when you go to this page, you'll have to accept the li license agreement. Otherwise, you won't be able to download the installer. Now, up at the top of the page here, there's information about the supported platforms. And for Mac OS in particular, you must have Yosemite version 10.10 .10 or higher installed to be able to use Java 9. And there's installation information for various platforms at the installation link as well. So you're going to go ahead and click accept license agreement. And then once you've done that, these links down here will become active. And as you can see, there's a Mac OS link for the Java runtime environment as a disk image file and the full Java development kit as a disk image file. If you intend to compile and run programs using Java 9, you'll need to download the JDK. Now, of course, let me go ahead and click this. Once you uh, accept the license and then click the disk image file link, it's going to start downloading that file. And I'm going to cancel that because I've already downloaded it. Now, once it is downloaded, you can simply double click that disk image. When that window opens, you'll see something like this. On my system, I have hidden files being shown, which is why these two folders are showing up. But all you need to do to install the Java development kit at this point is just double click this PKG file and then follow the on screen instructions. Once the JDK9 installer completes its tasks, you are going to have to perform some additional steps in order to select which JDK on your system you want to be the default one. For example, when you open a terminal window and use the Java or Java C commands. Now, before we get to those steps, I want to talk a little bit about JDK version numbering, which has changed as of Java 9. So prior to Java 9, each version of the JDK JDK was typically numbered 1 dot JDK version number dot zero, followed by potentially an underscore and some update number. So for example, at the time of this recording, Java 8's current JDK version number is JDK 1.8.0 underscore 131. And similarly, JDK 7 from Java 7, the last version, uh, the last update of that was JDK 1.7.0 underscore 
80. Now, as of Java 9, the JDK will initially be known as JDK-9, and then there will be minor version updates and security updates, and the numbering scheme for that has changed. So the way that's going to work is as follows. So for example, once we get to JDK 9.1.3, 9 is going to be your major Java version number, JDK 9. 1 would be a minor point release update number. And then 3 would be the security update number. So similarly, if we had 9.2.5, 9 would be your major update. 2 would be the minor update, typically with a patch, possibly with some additional features or bug corrections. And then 5 would be the number of security updates, not for the minor update number, but the total number of security updates across all point releases of Java 9 throughout its life cycle. Now, if you want to learn more about the changes to the JDK version numbering, you can check out the Java Enhancement Proposal number 223 at the link that I've provided here. Now let's take a look at the basic steps you'll need to perform to select the default JDK on your Mac. So first thing we're going to be doing is opening a terminal window. Then we're going to use this command here to list out the installed Java development kits. So in the user folder under libexec, there's a java underscore home command, and you're going to follow that with the command line argument dash uppercase V. Notice that's an uppercase, not a lowercase letter. Now that will list out every version of the JDK that's installed on your system. And the reason that's important is we need to know the version numbers to select which one is going to be the default JDK. So the next step is going to be to use that same command, Java Home, this time with dash lowercase v, and we're going to then replace this hash symbol with the actual JDK version number that we wish to use as our default JDK. So for example, when you then go and open a terminal window in the future, the and if you were to then check which version of Java is the default version, whichever one you specified with this command is the one that you're going to want to see come up at that point for each subsequent terminal window that you open. Now, it's not good enough to simply execute this command. We also need to export an updated Java home environment variable. So we're going to use this export command here to do that. And again, we're going to replace the hash symbol with the actual JDK version number that we wish to use. And I'd like to point out that these are not single quote marks at the begin beginning and end of the environment variables value. They are back tick marks. And you'll find those at least on an English keyboard uh, on the same key as the tilde character next to the number one key on your keyboard is where you'll typically find that. So now let's go ahead and actually perform the steps. Now I've already opened a terminal window on my system. If you don't know where to find that, the easiest way to find it is to simply go to your spotlight search icon and then type terminal. And as you type, it fills it in for you. Then you can simply double click terminal to open it. Uh, you can also go directly into your applications folder and then typically the utilities folder underneath that in order to access it directly from there. Now to spare you my uh, typing capabilities. I've gone ahead and pre-typed the commands into a text editor. So let me switch over to that for a moment. And I'm going to copy this first command, which is going to enable me to list out the default JDKs that are installed on my system. So I'll go ahead and paste that in and press enter. And you can see it tells me there are two matching Java virtual machines. It turns out that there's a these are actually the full JDKs that I have installed. You can see JDK 9 and JDK 1.8.0 over here. And these are the actual version numbers. So we've got 9 for the first one that's listed there. And we have 1.8.0 underscore 131, which at the time of this recording is the most up-to-date version of Java 8. Now, if I simply go in this window here and type Java dash version, whoops, there's my typing, and hit enter, you can see that the currently selected Java version for the 
uh, runtime is Java 1.8.0 underscore 131. And if I do the same thing with Java C, you can see that the current Java C version is also 1.8.0 underscore 131. So the next thing we want to do is switch to using Java 9. So let me switch back over to my text editor here. Now I've put in two versions of this Java home command, one that's specific to Java 9 and one that's specific to Java 1.8.0 underscore 131. So what we can do is switch back and forth relatively easily within the terminal window. In my case, I simply want to switch to Java 9 right now, so I'll copy this version of the command and I'll go paste that into my terminal window and press enter. And at this point, I've now selected uh, Java 9 as the default version, but I also need to update the Java home environment variable. So if I go and re-execute the Java C dash version, you see it still thinks that I'm using 1.8.0 here. So let's go back over here and copy the export command for the Java home environment variable. Again, back tick marks are uh, at the beginning and end of the value, not single quote characters. So let me copy that and I'll go ahead and paste that in and hit enter and at this point if I now check my Java C version I'll see that it thinks it's Java 9 and if I do the same thing for the Java command you'll see that it thinks it's the Java 9 runtime and for example uh, one of the Java 9 specific commands that you didn't have prior to Java 9 is the new J shell interactive Java development tool uh, and learning tool so if you want to prove that you've really selected Java 9 you can go ahead and type J shell and at that point you'll see the welcome to JShell pop up and the dash EA means early access again Java 9 at the time of this recording is early access and you can get out of JShell by just typing forward slash exit at which point it will return you to your command prompt now of course if you'd like to go back to to Java 1.8.0 as your default JDK, you can perform the same basic steps to select that JDK instead, which is something you'll need to do if, in fact, you're developing uh, for Java 8 or earlier versus testing with Java 9 because it's not a final product yet. Well, there you have it. I hope you found this video useful. If you do have any questions, again, you can feel free to email me at the email address you see at the top of this slide. And again, you can also contact me via our Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter social media pages.